welcome to class uh, 26 on topics in power electronics and distributed generation. So, we have been looking at uh, the currents and current components in a single phase inverter and uh, especially the single phase inverter with a capacitor center tap configuration. And uh, we looked at the uh, started off with a DC specification of the of the voltage which is linked to the AC terminal voltage specification with some additional inverter parameters. So, the other things that we need to consider is, uh, so the DC voltage rating was considered. So, we have to consider the effect of uh, low frequency harmonics on the voltage rating. In the last class we looked at, took a close look at the current rating and we saw that the current rating has uh, thermal implications and uh, it has implications on power loss and uh, cooling and the temperature of the capacitor core which has uh, rel reliability in implications. There are other factors such as hold up time of the capacitor uh, which can be important uh, in DG application. Uh, from the, uh, the reliability perspective we looked at a simplified model of the uh, component, the capacitor component as a bathtub curve which is a commonly used model for reliability and we came up with an estimate for end of life. So, if you look at the model that we had for the capacitor, So, if we have uh, the manufacturer specified L naught as the life at the at a, uh, a test measurement point from the manufacturer. T C naught and if you have data at the actual core temperature of T C A. then the life at the actual temperature uh, is approximately given by L naught and we are considering a doubling of life for a 10 degree uh, reduction in temperature of the core T C O minus T C actual by 10. Uh, you could also have a voltage multiplier effect. Uh, so, one factor is that effect on the, of the temperature which is actually a very significant effect. So, you could also have a voltage multiplier effect So, if you are operating close to V norm uh, is equal to V rated then uh, this has a value of 1 and it is great greater than 1 for V norm nominal operation of the capacitor to be less than V rated and uh, rapidly uh, degrading the capacitor if the actual operation of the capacitor uh, is above its rated voltage. Uh, many times you can have a 400 volt electrolytic capacitor for a short duration uh, for a few seconds you might be able to take it up by a few tens of volts above 400 volt, uh, but if you hold it at that level for a long time it will actually uh, get damaged in a matter of seconds. And But for a short duration you can actually take it above uh, the rated voltage it is not recommended for continuous operation or design. So, in the last class for our design of the capacitor, uh, one of the design points that we had chosen was uh, uh, we considered a capacitor C D C of 4 parallel uh, 150 microfarad 
450 volt capacitor uh, to obtain a load life of about 4.6 years and and power loss in the capacitor bank of uh, 15 watts. So, essentially what we had done was we uh, we calculated the current components then we looked at what the thermal impedance uh, from core to ambient is and we looked at the ESR. Uh, the values of ESR at different frequencies and calculated the temperature. So, we got uh, 4.6 years and the loss in the capacitor in the ESR because of these various current components totaled in both the top bank plus the bottom bank each bank consisting of 4 parallel capacitors to be 15 watts. And so, now we are left with uh, to look at what is the final voltage ripple that happens on this uh, capacitor banks. Uh, because of uh, the different uh, frequencies. So, one frequency is the 50 hertz which goes through the center tap and the frequency is the 100 hertz which comes on the DC bus and then you have the switching frequency effects because you have the output low frequency which is getting chopped by the action of the inverter. So, you have the high frequency effects. So, to look at these individual components we have Our CDC, CDC is 4 into microfarad is 600 microfarads. So, if you look at the 50 hertz voltage ripple, your voltage ripple at 50. So, this is we had 4.3 amps uh, flowing uh, per capacitor bank at 50 hertz times root 2 for the peak and the impedance of the capacitor to be 2 pi uh, 50 into 600 into 10 to the power of minus 6. So, this is about uh, 33 volts. So, uh, we also uh, can observe that this 50 hertz uh, applies plus uh, say for example, if the current is positive it will charge up the bottom bank and discharge the top bank. So, you might have plus 33 volts may be at one instant, but the top bank will have minus 33. So, the total voltage across the entire bank would be uh, not affected by this 50 hertz or in another instant bottom might be minus 33 and the top might be the other polarity, but their polarities uh, cancel. But on an individual uh, bank basis this is an important factor to consider. However, on a total bank basis it may not be observed, it, it is not observed. Okay. So, it is not seen on VDC. If you look at the 100 hertz effect, so this is uh, we had 1.8 amps flowing through the capacitor times root 2 to get the peak. So, the impedance is uh, 2 pi into 100 into 600 microfarads. So, it is 6.6 .6 volts per uh, capacitor bank. So, it is uh, because this voltage is actually uh, uh, getting this current is flowing uh, as a differential mode current through the bank. So, you have plus 6.6 .6 on top plus 6.6 .6 at the bottom. So, it adds up. So, seen as it is seen as a 13.2 volt ripple on VDC. If you look at the switching frequency effects and the switching frequency we have considered is 10 kilohertz we have 3.1 amp of ripple. Again, we are approximating it to be a, a sinusoidal component at a single frequency. So, 3.1 into root 2 uh, 
and if you look at the capacitive voltage drop this is 2 pi into 10 to the power of 4 into 600 microfarads. So, you have about 0.1 volt so hardly any ripple at the switching frequency. Uh, if you look at so this is because of the capacitive effect if you look at the ripple because of the ESR in the capacitor uh, with a similar uh, uh, switching frequency current flowing through. So, this is now uh, the ESR of the capacitor was 0 0.41 ohms at the 10 kilohertz there are 4 capacitors in parallel. So, you have about 0.4 volt due to the ESR of the capacitor. Uh, 0.1 volt because of the actual capacitance. So, at the switching frequency you could almost uh, consider only the ESR effect the capacitive is be, uh, capacitor is behave starting to behave more like a resistor rather than as a capacitor uh, even at the switching frequency ok. So, if you uh, so the ESR effect dominates. So, if you look at uh, uh, what is the uh, maximum voltage, uh, the maximum voltage seen by the individual capacitors and just uh, assuming a worst case scenario, we would have uh, 400 volts nominal for the individual capacitors. Uh, DC value uh, you have uh, 33 volts uh, because of uh, your 50 hertz effect you have about 6.6 .6 volts because of your 100 hertz effect. So, you have about uh, 440 volts uh, on uh, seen as the uh, voltage on your individual capacitor bank. So, you have actually a very tight margin of just 10 volts. So, your control has to be very effective so that you do not have large overshoots etcetera when you are actually dynamically controlling the DC bus. Uh, whereas, if you look at the overall total uh, capacitor uh, bank voltage so this is now uh, twice your 400 volts which is 800 volts which was our DC value plus uh, 13.3 which is twice 16.6. Uh, uh, so, about 813 volts is your total voltage seen by the whole uh, uh, post, uh, top and bottom capacitor bank. So, if you look at the ripple voltage uh, above your nominal voltage, so the ripple voltage is about 2 percent uh, ripple overall which might seem uh, re reasonable it is a tight design, but it is actually doable ok. So, you might have to be cautious about your control design so that you do not have large overshoots on the DC bus capacitor. So, you have to precharge it slowly etcetera ok. So, if you look at then uh, uh, the, the overall design of the DC bus capacitor bank. Uh, we saw that uh, the first thing that you decide is the type of capacitor you want to use. So, in a voltage uh, DC bus of a voltage source inverter a electrolytic capacitor is common. In fact, uh, people have started looking at uh, very high reliability inverters where you might uh, actually eliminate electrolytic capacitors in the DC bus. You might actually use uh, polypropylene type of capacitors, but its value is quite small and uh, if you want a large value of capacitance to hold a DC bus constant you will need a large bank ok. So, so the capacitor type is important the voltage rating from both DC and ripple perspective is important. Uh, the current ripple has implications on life and uh, efficiency if we uh, if you feel that you are tight on these two factors one might consider say uh, considering more capacitors in parallel. 
However, you also have uh, mechanical considerations which you need to consider. Uh, from the cooling perspective also, if you put more capacitors in parallel, you have more surface area for your capacitor bank. So, you effect, uh, effectively help reduce your thermal uh, uh, capacitance as long as you keep your packaging space between capacitors uh, uh, constant. But you also have mechanical constraint of uh, volume and size, etc., which means that you cannot go on increasing the number of devices that you could add in parallel. You end up now taking a lot of space. So, from your packaging constraint, you might have uh, mechanical constraints, you might have uh, sizing requirements which might uh, prevent you from uh, adding uh, more capacitors. Uh, you also have factors uh, like uh, if you add more, more and more capacitors in parallel, uh, in the system you are considering uh, uh, components that are increasing and we know from our uh, reliability studies that if you put more and more components into a physical system, uh, the chances of failure especially at connections, terminations, uh, breakage of term, uh, some problems at the connections can increase. So, putting very large number of components in parallel is also not uh, uh, a, a realistic solution from the perspective of component reliability. Okay. So, people have looked at what is a reasonable trade off in terms of uh, the voltage ripple, current ripple perspective, but at the same time not having too many components, overly large number of components. Also from a cost perspective, if you put too many in parallel, you may, your cost might actually go up quite sharply. So, now we will actually look at uh, 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 the one of the analysis that we did for evaluating the, uh, the, the current in the capacitor and the life of the capacitor was actually the, the switching models, what are the waveforms in the capacitor uh, due to the operation of the single phase inverter. So, we will now take a closer look at the switching model uh, of the power converter. Okay. So, if you look at uh, the, the leg of the power converter, we have uh, we looked at it earlier. Uh, the leg of the power converter is modeled as a single, uh, uh, single pole double throw switch. And uh, if you look at the overall inverter structure, you have the duty cycle coming in into your PWM block, where you are doing a comparison between your duty cycle and a triangular carri carrier. So, we were considering duty cycles in the range between 0 and 1 and the triangle carrier again being going as uh, in a symmetric manner from 0 to 1 and back down to 0. And the output of the comparison is the command to the top switch of your inverter which is S plus. And we also know that this is a model where we are considering exchange of power between two sources essentially the exchange of power is between your AC and DC side and the variables that we consider as input to the input uh, to the switching model is the are the two variables that are essentially varying slowly in such a model and the vari one variable which is varying slowly is the DC bus voltage. It does not change rapidly uh, because of the fact that we have a large capacitor typically connected to the DC bus. Another uh, slowly varying qu quantity is your AC current. Again the reason why we consider the AC current to be slowly varying is because we have a output filter which is typically a, a inductive filter uh, and the inductor prevents ch sudden changes in currents. So, we consider the AC quantity to be also slowly varying. So, the inputs to this particular inverter model is your uh, DC voltage and your AC current or your V in and your I out, uh, uh, IAC we have labeled in some of our diagrams uh, IAC as I out. And the uh, output of the switching model is actually the quantities that are varying quite rapidly uh, which is your output AC voltage which is uh, VON, we have labeled it as VON in many of our diagrams. This is output voltage with respect to the neutral or it can be the vo output voltage with respect to the negative bus 
uh, also something that can vary uh, the, the output of the switching model is your DC bus uh, currents which can be your positive bus current, negative bus current etcetera. Okay. If you look at the switching model of uh, uh, the uh, of such a power converter, uh, the question you could ask is uh, when would such a model be uh, required, when would it be useful to us and uh, definitely it is going to be useful to us if uh, the item of interest is actually close to the switching frequency or it may be something even which is uh, uh, higher than the switching frequency because of the rapid transitions that can occur because of the switching action of the inverter. Okay. So, if you look at the items of interest, so your input, the variables are VDC and comma IAC which we consider to be uh, smooth and continuous and your, uh, your outputs are VO which can be VON or IDC which can be on your positive or negative DC bus which are discontinuous. So, if you, you need the switching model if you are considering say for example, the switching action of the devices or the diode operation. For example, if you have DVDT spikes, DIDT spikes, you might have uh, stress on the inverter. stress on the components, uh, on the transistors etcetera, you definitely need to look at the uh, switching action. Uh, you may also be looking at uh, uh, the switching loss, so if you consider it uh, E on, E off etcetera, these are uh, uh, switching characteristics related. Uh, uh, so, if you are looking at it on a a detailed waveform basis that definitely would need a switching model. You may also need to consider uh, ripple effects for example, ripple in the filter for filter design. Uh, so, you might consider delta i in IAC, we consider IAC to be continuous, but it might have some underlying ripple uh, because of the switching action of the inverter and you want to decide how big a uh, inductor you want to put in the circuit. We also saw that we could calculate uh, ripple uh, IRMS current uh, in CDC. So, factors such as that uh, su such factors can be calculated from the uh, switching uh, model of the inverter. Okay. Uh, you might also be interested in say the PWM spectrum calculation. So, if you look at uh, the exact expressions for the PWM spectrum of, of say uh, sine triangle PWM, you get uh, Bessel functions etcetera, you have components not just at the switching frequency, but also at the side bands. So, more uh, sophisticated uh, PWM uh, modulation methods, if you want to study it close closely, you want to definitely look at the uh, switching functions, the switching model of the inverter. Okay. Uh, another uh, aspect which uh, uh, when you study closely, uh, it becomes an important uh, aspect of uh, all power converter design is how to handle uh, electromagnetic interference. Uh, these uh, interference effects are actually closely tied to uh, the switching effects, the DIDT, DVDT in the power converter. And also another part of the aspect of the inverter itself which is the uh, parasitic components in the circuit. Uh, 
So, a parasitic component that we recently uh, studied is the ESR of the capacitor. What we wanted to purchase was just a capacitor, but uh, we got a resistor along with the capacitor which is causing problems. Similarly, when you go to purchase uh, a transistor, you do not just get a switch, you have uh, lead inductances, you have capacitance not just from your collector to emitter of your transistor switch, but you can have capacitance between your, your silicon chip to your heat sink and uh, <coughs> these capacitances can actually carry uh, currents and uh, those currents can actually lead to significant uh, EMI concerns in your power converter. And these components preliminarily you might uh, assume to be ideal in the sense that you would assume that those uh, parasitics are not there, but in the actual realization of the power converter, if uh, these uh, effects are con uh, ignored, then EMI becomes a problem which uh, addressing at a later stage becomes an uh, issue. It is always good to look at what parasitic components are there in your circuits. You have stray capacitance between your magnetic windings and your body frame of your inductors, transformers, etc. Uh, so, these parasitic components if it can be included up front can actually be included with the switching model of the power converter to see what would be uh, a DIDT now coming with a inductive parasitic what would be the induced voltage or a DVDT now with a parasitic capacitance what would be the surge spiky currents that go into such a capacitor. So, these, uh, these analysis this type of uh, switching model analysis can give you a feel for what is the worst component in your layout which uh, gives you the maximum headache from a EMI perspective. Okay. But there are actually drawbacks of the switching model too and uh, one of the drawback of the switching model is related to the fact that the output of the model is discontinuous. So, whenever you have discontinuous functions you need more data points to actually describe it which and more data points means you have longer computation time, you need more memory requirement. So, uh, uh, you would always like to actually see where you could get, get away with something simpler and the something simpler is the average model. Okay. So, one can uh, look at the average model and the, mm, the main benefits of the average model is when we are looking at longer time frames. Uh, And one uh, uh, important uh, area where you would look at a longer time frame of the operation of an inverter is when you are actually looking at how to control the inverter. So, whenever you are looking at it uh, from a control design perspective, uh, you might say I want to look at uh, how do how does a MPPT act uh, over minutes duration rather than over microseconds duration where the switching frequency effects occur. So, if you are now wanting to sit, uh, do long, longer term simulations or multiple mu fundamental cycles, uh, maybe uh, when you are looking at uh, much longer duration like uh, mission, cyclic mission lifetimes, uh, days of simulation where you are looking at temperature effects which uh, cabinet temperatures can actually take uh, hours to settle. So, uh, uh, you might want to look at then a model which can uh, 
uh, we uh, uh, require less, lesser number of computations which can actually be solved in a shorter time frame and in a simplified manner, but can capture most of the effects of what the uh, switching model can do. Okay. So, another uh, aspect that can be uh, covered by the, the, the average model is uh, ability to understand underlying PWM amplifier For example, you might have a uh, low frequency spectrum of your PWM amplifier uh, in many advanced uh, PWM modulation methods like space vector, uh, discontinuous modulation, etc. One might consider adding a third harmonic. So, you want to look at the path for the third harmonics in the overall system through the filters, etc. You also have low frequency non idealities like distortions, dead bands, etc and you may want to look at the model of your inverter uh, from a low frequency perspective to study these effects in a closer manner. If you look at the time steps that are used for computation, uh, of the inverter. So, if we consider say, uh, uh, a, a, a switching frequency of 10 kilohertz, you are considering uh, a, a switching period of 100 microseconds. So, you are talking about your time step to be much lesser than your TSW, your switching period. So, if you are talking about uh, for 10 kilohertz FSW, you are talking about time step. Uh, TSW of uh, 100 microsecond, you might take a T step of uh, maybe 1 microsecond if the, you are looking at something on uh, uh, a fine grain basis, you might even take it lower if you are looking at DI DTs, DV DTs during switching action, etcetera. Uh, but you can see that uh, you have a constraint of uh, your computation time to your uh, switching frequency. Uh, whereas, uh, if you now look at uh, on an average basis, you might actually just uh, do one computation per uh, uh, switching period. Uh, so, you are talking about uh, benefits advantages of uh, 100 to 1000 times uh, uh, increased speed in your computation. Okay. So, something which might take hours on a switching model ca can be done maybe in a few minutes uh, or maybe just a minute in your uh, average model. So, to, so to look at the average model, uh, we will start off with again the, the switching model of the power converter and we are familiar with the switching model, uh, which is the, uh, the single pole double throw switch. So, we, uh, so we consider a switch in parallel with the diode so if this is can transistor qp and qn and the switching is s plus for say if you consider this as leg a and this is i a is the current flowing out p and n uh, and our p w m action is generated by uh, sine triangle comparison. So, we have a triangle going between 0 and 1 
and we can consider it with respect to uh, a, a reference, say some reference R. So, we have uh, v, uh, uh, VAR, if this is VA. So, in the top of mid the midpoint topology that we considered on a single phase basis, we had considered uh, the neutral to be the center point which was the reference. So, we have S plus for our switching function of leg A is 1 if uh, d A is greater than your triangle of your PWM. and 0 otherwise. We also know how to relate the duty cycle back is 1 by T S W integral 0 to T S W uh, S plus A D T and the switching of the bottom switch is S A uh, minus is 1 minus S A plus. So, we can actually write an expression for V A R the voltage at A with respect to R is S plus V of P with respect to R plus S A minus V N with respect to R and uh, we can make use of S A minus is 1 minus S A plus. So, we get this is to be equal to S A plus V P N or V P N is our V D C plus V N R. So, we have a simplified model for our DC uh, uh, out, uh, output voltage. So, you have let's consider this as 1. So, this is the switching fun de uh, function description of our leg A. Okay. And if we then average this particular expression over uh, one switching period, uh, we will put a bar to indicate it is average V A R. Uh, so, if you now consider the average of S A plus V D C, we will make an additional ass assumption that V D C does not change significantly over uh, uh, one switching period. So, you get the average of S A plus V D C and this is the V D C average uh, plus V N R average and uh, we know that the S A plus average is our D A uh, and the V D C is not changing uh, significantly. So, we have V A R is D A V D C plus V N R. So, so, so this is a, the, uh, the, the uh, one is the ex uh, switching function model and the 2 represents essentially the average model and uh, uh, you can actually drop these bars without uh, la uh, large change uh, any significant ambiguity in what type of model you are writing uh, because you know that uh, uh, the switching function represents a discontinuous function whereas, d a represents something that is smooth a smooth function which is continuous. Okay. So, similarly one can actually write the switching function relation between your DC bus uh, uh, positive current I D C P is S A plus times I A which is the switching model of uh, the uh, of the current. And uh, if you then take the average here, taking the uh, the uh, the average of S A plus I A, we are again going to make the assumption that uh, I A does not change significantly over one uh, switching period. This uh, uh, this might be a looser assumption compared to assuming that the DC bus voltage is staying constant. Constant. Uh, it does have implications. For example, this type of model you may not be able to average when your I A output frequency is getting very close to your switching frequency. But for sufficiently uh, 
a large difference between your fundamental frequency and switching frequency, we could go ahead and do take the average and we have I d c average is equal to d a times I a. Similarly, you could uh, take the uh, model for the negative DC bus current I uh, DC for the negative bus is S A minus I A which is 1 minus S A plus. So, you will get 1 minus D A times I A to be your negative DC bus current. Okay. So, if you now uh, 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 draw the model of, uh, of the, uh, the average model you have essentially your positive bus, negative bus your DC bus capacitor bank uh, supporting your VDC, you have D A I A uh, coming in from your positive DC bus, you have one minus D A I A respect to n p. If you look at your output voltage you have d a times v d c generating your output voltage v a which is going out through your filter. So, it is your continuous current which is your i out or i a c. If you look at the voltage d a it is actually with respect to n and here you what you end up with in this model is that this particular point is also uh, linked to the same reference. So, the bottom part of this model you have a current source which is uh, going into a short circuit. So, you find that this particular path is redundant you can actually simplify it and so you can make the model to be something simpler you have essentially d a i a So, this current is now automatically d a i a and because this current is i a this this current that is going through the negative d c bus is actually 1 minus d a i a. So, it satisfies the same constraint as your uh, as what is there uh, shown over here uh, and the inputs to this particular model are are essentially your duty cycle, your I A and your V D C and uh, uh, typically in uh, control applications you will have measurement of your DC bus voltage, you have uh, your AC uh, current measurements, your controller is actually outputting your duty cycle and then you could actually incorporate a model such as this for the one leg of the power converter. So, instead of using the average value now the, val uh, the value of V A with respect to a reference is now a continuous quantity rather than a discontinuous quantity. And similarly, the currents that are coming in are now continuous quantities rather than discontinuous quantities. Also the assumption that we have made in this model is that the duty cycle belongs to the range 0 comma 1. If you if your duty cycle goes out of the range you might find that you are uh, your energy conservation equations may not be satisfied, your amplifier cannot generate more voltage than what is available. Uh, so, you need to ensure that uh, you are respecting your duty cycle constraints. You also have other uh, non-idealities that you have ignored in this model. Uh, you have ignored non-idealities such as uh, uh, dead time, uh, switch voltage drops etcetera which might effectively reduce the actual voltage that will be uh, obtained at the output of uh, this average model. Uh, 
so you can ask a question now in this this average model uh, can we uh, can we uh, take this particular inverter to be a, a amplifier gain so if you consider uh, this particular uh, amplifier as having a very stiff dc voltage you can see that the relationship between your duty cycle input and your output voltage va is essentially just uh, da vdc so if we consider vdc to be constant so essentially you have a gain times your input to be your output so many times we might uh, further simplify from your output voltage perspective your inverter to be considered a ideal amplifier okay so you can but if you look at it from the reverse perspective uh, where you're looking at the currents that are coming into your dc bus you your duty cycle might be uh, a sinusoidal quantity your uh, input current would be a sinusoidal quantity so you might uh, you may not be able to take a simple gain model uh, as the relationship between your currents at the input and output uh, one current may be uh, 50 hertz and then your ripple now on your dc bus is uh, now starting to occur at uh, 100 hertz etc however between your duty cycle and your output voltage you have the same frequency effect so you could consider it to be just a linear amplifier with simplifying assumptions regarding the dc bus another factor to be considered when you are uh, modeling uh, a, a inverter uh, especially considering uh, uh, the uh, when you are looking at uh, one leg is uh, in the, in this particular case if you had this is for one leg of the power converter if you have uh, two legs uh, you could consider two such uh, models in parallel if you have polyphase you could consider multiple such legs in parallel so this uh, particular uh, uh, average model can be uh, generalized okay so another factor to consider when you uh, think uh, when you are modeling the converter is the effect of pwm delay so this is especially important when you are considering the bandwidth of the converter to be uh, close to the the switching frequency uh, in engineering often when we consider uh, something to be close or fa far we consider numbers such as factor of 10 so if your switching frequency is 10 kilohertz and if you are considering control bandwidths below uh, 1 kilohertz then you might say uh, you could maybe ignore the delay effects but for designs where you want to actually consider switching frequencies which are much closer to your your bandwidth so you you may want to have a bandwidth close to 1 kilohertz but your switching frequency may be just 2.5 kilohertz and the reason why you don't want to take your switching frequency high is you know that your switching losses would go up with frequency so you don't want to take it to be much higher than what is really just required okay then you will have to maybe now look at what are the delay effects that are there uh, because of the pwm also many times in uh, uh, modern power converters the pwm delay gets added on to the computational delay in your digital controller and uh, so the overall delay becomes an important factor okay so if you consider the pwm uh, operation and say duty cycle coming down so so uh, we, if in a digital controller your actual point at which you are updating your duty cycle may be at some regularly sample points if you are having an analog type of implementation you might be able to have the exact uh, 
intersection of your sine wave and your uh, your duty cycle wave and your triangle uh, people have uh, looked at the difference between regularly sampled and naturally sampled pwm and th the performance is actually quite similar okay uh, there are some um, uh, pulse uh, position changes because of the sampling but people have found that uh, you get similar performance uh, in the two methods okay but you can see that in uh, in case when your duty cycle is close to uh, one uh, update over here will give you a fast response for uh, the operation your output uh, voltage goes up to a high value uh, very close to when your actuation your actual computation is updated whereas uh, say if you look at uh, the point 3 you are updating over here and now you have a delay between when your actual uh, switching action is taking place and when uh, the, the computation is being provided from your controller. And uh, this depends on uh, what is the value of the pulse that you are trying to get etc. and it is uh, a varying effect but it is modeled as a, uh, as a, a, a equivalent um, uh, delay model of TSW by 2. Okay. Uh, so, another way of looking at uh, why or whether one can justify uh, such a model for the delay, one can look at the expression for the average output voltage and the volt second uh, match uh, at the output of the inverter. Okay. So, if you look at the average output voltage, say V A with respect to say the neutral in our inverter model is V d c into d minus half. Uh, so, this was the average model over T s w. So, if you look at the volt second on a a to n basis, you can describe it as integral uh, with respect to time, uh, time t. S plus V d c by 2 minus 1 minus S plus V d c by 2 uh, d tau where tau is the uh, time with respect to which you are doing your volt second integration. Okay. Uh, so, at T is equal to T s w we have volt second <coughs> a n divided by T s w by definition this is what your average is V a n average. Okay. So, if you look at uh, what this means if you look at your P w m uh, switching cycle you might have uh, the output of the inverter going between 0 uh, plus V d c and minus V d c by 2. and you might have an average value and by definition the average cancels out the positive and negative uh, uh, volt second error. And if you look at then the volt second error that you are building, building up uh, again assuming that your error is 0 to start with. So, volt second error you are starting off with 0 you are having some ne negative volt second error then your volt second error is going to the other side and coming back. So, if this was instant 1 at which you are updating your PWM operation the point at which uh, your, uh, your error comes back to 0 is at T s w by 2 and at T s w and subsequent uh, 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 points. So, if you look at a control uh, action 
the time to take for the error to go back to 0 is uh, T s w by 2 and uh, many times the delay between when you give a command and the, uh, the output to go back to 0 uh, and all this, the subsequent uh, ripple would be such that the positive and the negative volt seconds balance out. So, one could model the delay effect of the PWM uh, uh, leg to be T s w by 2 uh, from also from a volt second perspective, volt second error perspective. Uh, so, this uh, often in a power converter is used along with the model of your output filter. Uh, people when uh, they model the inverter for digital control might uh, model the inverter as a zero order hold. So, if you look at the, uh, the phase delay of a zero order hold uh, where the zero, zero order hold is being updated at a rate of TSW is actually uh, the delay is T s w by 2. So, many times people use a zero order hold model for the inverter uh, with their subsequent uh, analog filter etcetera. In case there is subs, uh, sufficient uh, separation between your switching frequency and your control frequency, then uh, it, uh, people might be even justified in ignoring such delay effects. Uh, thank you. <coughs>